Hi, in this session, I would like to take you through deploying a web application in Azure Platform as a Service web apps. Uh, currently in my C drive, I have a web application project. Uh, it's called Contoso Sports League. And let's take, uh, let's go through the various steps which is required to uh, install this particular application in Azure Pass. So over here, I'm in the Azure portal. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the web application, Azure Web Apps or Azure App Services to create an Azure uh, Web App plus SQL instance. So I go to web plus mobile, uh, and if I click see all here, I would see web app plus SQL. So I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to click on create. And at this point, uh, I have the ability to create an app, uh, a web app plus SQL instance. So I'm just going to give uh, a name, and this ha this name has to be uh, a unique name. Uh, so I'm going to call it, uh, you know, Sanjeev Ecom One. That's the name uh, of the app application or the URL where the web application is going to be hosted. And uh, I'm going to put this in a resource group. Uh, I'm going to call this a unique name here and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an app service plan. So essentially when I create, a, when I choose an app service, I have the ability to to put that in uh, in, a, in, an, in the specific type of plan you, li you like based on the number of resources and everything you want to make available to your application. So in this case, I'm going to choose an S1 app, uh, app service plan. And I'm going to uh, call my app service, uh, app service plan one. And I'm going to put this in the East US, which is closest to, uh, uh, to where my users are going to be mostly accessing. Um, and I'm going to um, also put this, uh, I, I need to also configure a SQL Server database because at, as part of this, I have, uh, as part of creating this, app service i also mentioned that i could i also want a database behind the scene so over here i'm going to create a new database i'm going to call it uh sanjeev ecom one and i'm i need to i need to be sp specify which server i'm going to host this uh this sql azure sql database again this is an azure sql uh, database I'm going to call my, uh, I'm going to give a name for my Azure SQL database and I'm going to create a username, an admin username and password. Uh, uh, and I'm going to again uh, confirm the password here. Uh, and I'm going to give a location where uh, this particular database is going to be hosted. So I selected the uh, database as well, and I just click select. So at this point, I provided all the necessary information required to create a web app plus SQL. So I'm just going to go ahead and create. It's going to take uh, a couple of minutes uh, to, to deploy. Uh, as you can see, the deployment is in progress. And uh, in a few minutes, you will see that it's deployed. Uh, just give it a couple of minutes here and let me just pause this recording and come back. All right, so at this point, uh, the deployment is succeeded. So now let's go back to the, the resource groups and then uh, under which I created it, I, uh, I call the resource group Sanjeevicom1. And let's look at all the resources uh, it uh, created. So as you can see, I've got an app service plan and a SQL database uh, which has been created. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to go to the SQL database and get the connection string for the SQL database so that I can uh, I can put that as part of the uh, web application project uh, which is going to be leveraging this uh, SQL server connection string. So let me go back to um, the connection string here. I'm going to copy this connection string and put that uh, in uh, a notepad here so I can go and refer to, uh, I can use this to copy uh, to my uh, my web application. So I got the uh, 
I, I got the database here. So, um, uh, and then the next thing I want to do, I want to be able to uh, make sure that I can access this database by uh, making sure this uh, the the firewall uh, is turned off. Okay, so let me go back to my main resource groups here, and then if I go back uh, to my uh, SQL Server, so essentially there's, there's a server, and then there is a table. So this is the server instance, and I see all these table instances right here, and I can go to my firewall settings, and uh, what I would like to do is I want to make sure that uh, from the client at which which is which I'm accessing from I have the ability to access uh, uh, the, the firewall is open so that from this client IP I can access this particular database so I just added the client IP here and I clicked save so at this point I have the firewall provisioned the next thing I also want to do uh, for this particular application is I want to have a storage account uh, where, where essentially my web application would require uh, a queue type storage to uh, to store some data. So I'm going to uh, create a queue storage. So I'm going to ask uh, create a storage account here. Uh, look for my storage account. And as you can see, what I really want is the storage account. And over here, I'm just going to go next and I'm going to uh, click create. So at this point, I have the ability to create a, a storage account, and I'm going to give uh, my storage account a name. Uh, I'm going to follow the same convention here. Uh, I just give the storage account a name. And at this point, I have different options here with respect to how I want to configure my storage account. So uh, I would want to, uh, in this case, because I have got I'm creating a queue type storage. I want to keep it a general type storage. A blob storage is just for blob uh, type storage. It, it, uh, with general purpose storage, I have the ability to store table, queues, and all the other types of storage as well. And then um, I, I'm going to keep standard as my performance level. And uh, one of the options I have is what kind of redundancy or resiliency I, I need for my storage. I'm going to choose uh, the least level of resi uh, of resiliency here because uh, this is a test application. I'm not really worried much about resiliency. Um, and I'm going to use my existing uh, uh, existing resource group here uh, where I'm going to put it in. And I also have the ability to create uh, an encryption. As, uh, um, I mean, a, to, to enable encryption. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and click create. So at this point, I created a, a storage account, and um, uh, it's actually going ahead and uh, provisioning the storage account. So again, if I go back to my resource group and then go to my particular resource group, uh, in a in a in a few seconds, you will see that it will come up. As you can see, the deployment is still in progress. Uh, so let's come back in a minute. So the storage account has been provisioned. So just click refresh here, and I see that I have the storage account. So one of the things I would require for the storage account is to be able to access the storage account. And for that, I need a key to be able to access my storage account. So I'm going to copy my, my, uh, my, uh, my connection string, which I require uh, to uh, uh, to connect to my storage account. At this point, I'm going to put my, I copied that uh, to my notepad so I can, uh, I can, I can, I can get the later here. So I'm just going to copy that to my notepad here. So I have my connection string copied as well. So the next thing I want to do is I want to be, uh, I'm going to open up my project, my web application, which is right here uh, in my C drive. I'm going to open my solution, uh, which is going to be, which is going to be opened in Visual Studio 2017. Uh, I am going to open it. It's going to take uh, a minute or so to open. So let's just give it a minute. 
All right, at this point, the uh, the project is open. So I'm going to um, copy the keys which I uh, which I I've already you know copied so that this web application can connect to the database as well as the uh, storage. So so this is an e-commerce web application, and over here, I got a bunch of uh, things here. I got the payment gateway. I got an admin website. But this is the primary uh, e-commerce site. Is this web application? It also has got an admin website and a bunch of other things. Uh, but primarily, I just want this web application uh, to uh, be up and running. So if I go to my web.config, uh, this is where I'm going to store all my connection strings. Um, and I want to be able to copy uh, my connection string here. Uh, so let me copy my connection string. So at this point, I copied my connection string. But as you can see, I, I don't have the user ID and password. So I'm just going to, I need to put in my user ID and password. I'm going to pause for a minute while I'm entering the password and I'll come back. Okay, I copied that uh, connection string. The next thing I want to do is I want to be, I, I have a, a table storage as well, which I'm using. So for, for that, I need to be able to leverage my other connection string, which I had copied here. So I'm going to copy that and then copy that key to my uh, storage account. So um, over here, um, I have, let me just, uh, uh, so as you can see, I got this Azure queue connection string. So I'm going to copy that here. Uh, and while I'm copying it, I'm just going to pause this recording. Great. At this point, I'm, I'm done with uh, updating the connection string. So I'm just going to uh, start uh, the debug. Uh, I mean, start the building. Uh, I'm going to just build, rebuild this particular solution uh, just so that it compiles. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy it to my e-commerce website so i'm going to uh, in order to deploy it i just right click on this uh, application and click publish when i publish as you can see uh, you know there are several options and one of the first option here is to be able to simply click publish to an azure app service so i already have created i have an existing application azure app service which is where the web application uh, was created earlier so I'm just going to click on select existing web application. So it automatically provided me uh, the web application to which I want to be able to connect to. And I'm just going to click publish. So it's uh, it's that easy uh, to essentially deploy a web application which I create using Visual Studio and C Sharp, uh, and then uh, to be and then uh, simply deploy it to. Um, to uh, an Azure uh, website. So in a few minutes, you will see that uh, it's it's connect created and then it's opening up the Azure websites where it's deployed to. So, so, you can, uh, so, so as this is the first time I'm accessing this website, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, there you go. So I created uh, a public website where I can access, um, where I deployed my uh, as, as Azure web application and as you can see this is working and I can click on my store and I should be able to see a bunch of um, uh, uh, data here and all of this data is in fact coming from my SQL Azure database uh, so it's working and if I go back to my portal here uh, all this is, is essentially deployed into my uh, into my uh, into this particular resource group and into all this into this web application as well as all the data is residing in this particular uh, database. So uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you.